What's going on guys, this is Nate from the Scrub Academy welcoming you to another episode of our Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Solo Mode series. If you have not seen our previous episode where we ended up completing the Legend of the Star Heroes, make sure to go ahead and check up the cards, I will link it up there for you guys, as well as linking the entire playlist down below in the comments section. But today guys, we are going to be taking on the very next and currently the final gate in the Solo Mode series. That would be the Enforcers of Justice or Light Swarm. Um, I have played Light Swarm a little bit in the real world, IRL, but not too much. Um, it was out before I actually got into playing the TCG. So we're going to be learning all about that today, we're going to be playing through it. Um, there are multiple different levels, looks like they are getting into longer areas, so we're going to be doing most likely from first scenario to second scenario, possibly doing the lock duels depending on how long it takes, kind of just depends on how long the duels take, and then jumping in through these duels and then finishing up all the way through. So let's go ahead, we're going to jump into the very first scenario here, and learn about the Light Swarm. Alrighty, Enforcers of Justice. Sword in hand, clad in armor, body adorned in robes. All shine brightly like platinum, the heroic platoon's display of power. They're known as the Light Sworn. From whence did they come, and for what did they fight? The wishes of those praying for peace, the cries of those suffering under tyranny, and the innocent tears of children. They appear suddenly, an army of light breaking through the barrier of space and time. To each they aid, their justice embodies a different form. Some see a knight in shining armor, others see a graceful wizard. Still others see a divine angel or a dragon so great eclipses the mountain with a, sw with a single wing, they claim. Regardless of the form the enforcers take, their mission is unchanging. After annihilating the wicked, they vanish without a trace. They live in the radiant realm of light. In a world existing in another plane of space and time, they continually train in preparation for dispensing justice. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. They're kind of like angels. Alright, so let's go ahead. We'll learn the ins and outs of the Light Swarm deck. And get ourselves 150 light orbs for our trouble. Alrighty. What makes a Light Sworn deck unique? This deck is filled with monsters with high attack and useful effects, but you must send a few cards from your deck to the graveyard during each of your end phases. Make sure you settle the duel before you run out of cards to draw. If you can fill your graveyard with four or more Light Sworn monsters with different names quickly, you will be able to bring out the Ace Monster Judgment Dragon. This monster has an effect that allows you to destroy all other cards on the field at the cost of 1,000 life points. And I hate that card because it just continues, it can just keep going, it is not what's returned. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. We're going to draw into Solar Recharge. Discarding a Light Sworn, draw two cards and send two to the top of, top of your deck to the graveyard. Set everything up to Special Summon, Judgment Dragon, and win this turn. Activate Solar Recharge. Alright, so we're literally going to activate sending our Jane to draw two and discard two. Or send two. We can Special Summon the Wolf here. Maybe Summon Celestia Lightsworn Angel and destroy your opponent's monster using its effect. We'll Tribute Summon the Wolf. I like playing Lightsworn Lavals. That was a pretty fun deck that I actually ended up playing at one point. Might bring that back. Who knows? If you want to see that, let me know. Go ahead and pop his monster before he can use his Raikou. Now there are four types. There are now four types of Lightsworn monsters in your graveyard. Special Summon, Judgment Dragon, and Attack per game. And then that's all we got to do. We don't have to link or anything here, or. Anything that they might want us to do. And just push right on through. I'm curious to see what decks they combine with the light swarms. What goes well with it, you know? Alrighty, let's go ahead and we'll jump into our first duel here. And we'll see what happens. Alright, so it's easy to be distracted by the effects of Judgment Dragon destroying all cards in the field, but be aware of the number of shine counters on Realm of Light and Light Swarm. Light Sworn Sanctuary. Sometimes you need to build your tactics considering that you can't destroy them with a single effect. Interesting. I've never actually seen either of those cards or read them. It's going to be interesting to see what they actually say. Open up 
send up a light swarm, lightning swarm, and Raiden here, and a wolf. Unfortunately, let's go ahead. We're gonna normal summon our Raiden here. Raiden's effect will activate that, sending the top two cards to the graveyard. Load that up with a Lumina. All right, let's go ahead. Hmm, that's not what I wanted then. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll just uh, we'll enter in there, and then we have the Honest for protection. How about that? Draw, turn. We're drawing into a second wolf. That is gross. Um, let's go ahead. We'll set this card. And we'll just activate Raiden. Setting two. Didn't do anything for us. Uh, and we'll end our turn there. <laughs> That's all we got. These stupid wolves in our hand. Stupid wolves. I do want to get to that JD, though. Ew. We'll have to chain that. That's not good. Um, no. That's fine. Now we can. Oh, he's gonna tribute over it for a Celestia. To blow up our field. Okay. I see how it is. And he gets his wolves into the grave. I don't get my wolves into the grave. For 44. We just luck we we got bad luck there with the two wolves, honestly. I need something to discard them in the grave now. And that is not what we needed, honestly. Um, we'll just go ahead, we're gonna activate the lightning storm. Destroying both these monsters. Uh, we'll set this, I suppose, and then I don't want it, but I'm gonna set the honest just so we have some defense, since we do have lower life points now. Hopefully he doesn't do anything, and we can actually do something during our turn. Mm -mm. Oh, he has his own JD. That's good. That's good. So we lose, is what you're saying. Um. Yeah, let's activate that, because I don't want him to attack. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything against him. But we will have to see. I need I need to do something here. Raiden. Okay, so it all comes down to whether or not we send something good to the grave. Did we send anything good to the grave? Nope. Cool. We sent a Judgment Dragon, though. That's great. <laughs> um, we'll just end our turn, I suppose. We'll see. Oh, that actually could work out for us. Push on the Felis, and then... Isn't that supposed to pop something? Oh, you can tribute one to target. I can't even chain it because it was during my turn. Hey, we're losing. All right. <laughs> GG. All right. All right. Well, you know. Had to happen at some point. We're going to get the loss out of the way first. That way, that's the only loss we're taking for the rest of the day. We can jump in here and really get something going this next duel. Now, Monarchs is a... Monarchs actually doesn't have a good matchup. This is probably going to be the first time you see a struggle with Monarchs, unless we Brick. Just because a lot of times with Monarchs, we are going to be... Hmm, let's go ahead, we'll do that. We'll discard Illumina here. Actually, yeah, we'll discard Illumina. Draw two, send two. Full recharge, same thing again. We don't really need to keep doing that, though. We'll summon our Raiden here. Activate that on top of it. But yeah, uh, Monarchs is going to have a tough time, honestly, just because this is going to be the first time where we're not really trying to limit their extra deck usage. So we're going to have to be pure power against them. I need a Lila. Ooh, we actually got our first JD. That could actually be very beneficial to us. Let's go ahead. We'll activate our Soul Recharge here. Let's get rid of... Oh, man. Um... Yeah, we'll get rid of this. Draw two, dis uh, dump two. And we actually... I guess he's going to get pumped up even more. All right. Okay, so we can send the top three to add one. So that's going to be good for us. Let's go ahead. We'll send the top three, and then we're going to add a Lila. And I did see a wolf actually get dumped to the grave. 
so that's gonna be good for us. We'll go ahead and special summon that right there. We will summon our Lila. Oh, okay. What is this doing to type of monster to get some? If you do destroy the monster, okay. That's fine. That's fine. We'll attack for 21 and 31 here. And I'm wondering if I already had enough to special summon the JD, and if it was, I could have gamed him. Oh well. This next time I should be able to just game him right away, because I can just destroy whatever he has with Judgment Dragon. So I'm not too worried here. He's not even going to do anything anyway, so this actually works out really well. Raiden, um, let's see what we can do. Normal summon the Lumina. Activate the effect, discarding the Celestia. Special summon back a Lila. Attack position. Activate the Lila. Change it to defense to destroy your face down. And that's all she wrote. Alright, so that see, it's all about what you draw. Um, just opening those two wolf was really bad. We couldn't get anything going. Our meals weren't good. It just wasn't a fun time. At all. So let's go ahead. We'll jump into our next duel here. See what we can do. So, let's see if we actually struggle with this. I'm curious to see if we'll struggle. It might depend on if we brick or not. If we brick, it might be all over, but if we don't, we should be okay. Um, we did not brick, but we didn't open good. Literally at all. Okay. Final. All I... Domain, maybe, would be a good one here. Form fourth. It'll work. Maybe not. Never mind. I don't even want to summon anything now. Or set anything. I need a domain or something else. Stupid traps. That's not going to be good for us at all. 18, 28, 38, 4,000. Math is a good thing, bad thing? No. 3,000. That was bad at math. Maybe he'll mill everything. Oh, crap. Now he's getting a JD, too. If I could get to an Erebus and shuffle that back into the deck, that'd be dope. Loading up this field. Aether. Doesn't help me though. Literally doesn't help me. Nothing, nothing. Okay, we're just gonna surrender and try again. So, we did lose with, uh, with, with Monarchs. I wasn't actually expecting that whatsoever. But those traps hurt with the, only that one Eidos. Nothing we could really do there. Nothing we could really do. Alright, let's see again. This time we opened up all the Eidos and Ideas, and we didn't get any monsters. So that's cool too. That's real cool. So this card right here is going to be the Raikou. We don't really want to deal with that whatsoever. We are unfortunately going to have to. It's going to destroy our monster. But we don't really have to worry about that, I don't think. Let's see what happens here. So we'll activate the idea, especially the Eidos. Get ourselves a summon. Activate the return. We'll normal summon. Our Iribus. Uh, chain link one, return. We'll add chain link two. Then one from his hand of the deck. We'll dump the Pantheism. The Prime. We can then banish the Pantheism. Um, Ryza? Alright, so from here we can banish the Pantheism. And now it kind of depends on how we want to do things. Um, I want to get to a march, honestly, but when it comes down to it, these ones are probably going to be effective as well, swapping their effects to mill. 
Ooh, we got the march. Okay, so that's actually really good for us here. That way he can't destroy our monster with this Raikou. Oh, it's not even a Raikou. Okay. I was expecting a Raikou there. We'll go main phase two, set in impermanence, and then we will end our turn. And you have rise up for next turn as well. And now we can start getting lots of summons out. All right. So here's where we wanted to have the Ryza. So what we can do here is, ooh, we got lots of stuff we can do actually. Let's go ahead, we can activate the Eidos, special summon the idea. We may or may not be able to game here, probably not, but we're gonna find out. Idea, special summon the Eidos. Activate this. Finacinate, revealing the Ryza. That will add the Storm Force. Storm Force activate. So we can tribute summon over the idea. And his monster. There's the Raikou. I knew it was somewhere. Electric card to return to the deck. So that was, we had to do that, which sucks. Um, I guess this, select a card, a target to send back to the deck, we'll send the storm forth, we can reuse it later, we'll chain the re, chain you, um, chain that to add back the pantheism that we banished. 2856. What do we want to add now? Add an Aether. That should be able to finish the job for us. That'll shuffle back that. Um, we can activate the Prime, banishing the Tenacity. We can summon over the top of these two. Activate his her effect. Send a pantheism and escalation to the grave. Special summon a Thestalos. And that's game. As long as it has anything to stop me anyway. I won't get my hopes up just yet. There we go. All right. We didn't actually even need that last one, to be honest. But it works out for us. Alrighty. So we completed that one. And that was actually really fast for us. So let's go ahead. See if we can do these all. We'll unlock the top portion of this. Let's go ahead. We'll jump into our next one. And we're going to use... Oh, I didn't read the... I didn't read the description. So who knows what his Life's Warm deck is going to be combined with. We're going to find out. Hopefully it's something fun. I'm seeing lots of stuff here. Good and bad, honestly. I'm going to end my turn and just hopefully that the impermanence will help me out here. Because the rest of this, we want to do during our turn. He's discarding that to Special Summon. Let's go ahead and imperm that. That way we can stop that from happening, because I just saw that wolf get discarded, so he's going to try and special that wolf or something else. And we don't need that. He can attack for a thousand, I'm okay with that. He can't even mill either, which is good for us. Alright, let's see what we can do here. An Eidos, okay. So this is working out for us. Let's go ahead. Hmm, let's normal summon our Eidos. We're gonna activate Tenacity here. Tenacity is gonna reveal the Mobius. And we're gonna add a return. We're going to activate the return. Activate the Storm Pour, tributing both of these. For our Mobius. Unfortunately, we have to use the Mobius now instead of later. 
Um, we can just go ahead and activate the return though. And we're not gonna chain them over, yes, that'd be stupid. And we're gonna add an Erebus. We can just go battle phase and attack for 28. And hope that he doesn't have anything to get over my guy during the next turn so I can actually summon out the Erebus. Okay, Rhoda into Jane. Setting a monster. Probably not the best idea for you there, but we are going to be good to go here. Let's see here. We will... Let's activate that discard in the domain. We don't really need it with this deck. I feel like that's the opposite of what we really need. Into an idea. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll activate that Pantheism now. We're actually going to get it going pretty good here. We don't even need to lose our Mobius. Activate that. Uh, let's go Tenacity, Tenacity, and March again. In case that is a Raikou. Tenacity. Well, Tenacity of the Erebus into the, into the March. Grab that. That way we can't lose to this Raikou if it is that. Which I'm guessing it is. But we're going to find out. We'll activate the March. Normal summon the idea. Idea effect will special summon the Eidos. Get ourselves that additional summon. We will tribute summon over the top of these two. So we'll do Erebus chain link one, sending one of those back. Return chain link two to add. Probably at the Stalos, I want to say. And then we can add back the Pantheism. Add back Pantheism there. Return will add the Thestalo, so we can burn him. And then Erebus will shuffle one back, hopefully something good for him. And we'll just dump a Pantheism and the... Oh, we can dump a Prime. Send one of those back. And now, let's just go battle phase here. Back into his monster. It is not the right like I thought it was. Why are you setting that, of all things? Anyway. And next turn should be game as long as he can't do anything to us, which I don't believe he should be able to. But I'm not going to say never until we're done. Oh, okay, okay. Ex by having five or more... Target one set card, okay. He's not gonna do anything though, which is interesting. Let's see what I can draw into here. A Mithra. I guess we can go ahead and... Do we sacrifice? No, we don't even have to worry about that actually. We have, the, we have a Pantheism in the grave, I believe. I think we should be good then. Get those going. Pantheism in the Grape. We do have a Pantheism in the Grape because of the Erebus. Banish that. Add a... You, you. Or you, I guess? They always give you the tenacity, even though, like... They're hoping you don't have a Monarch, even though you're always going to have a Monarch. You reveal the Tenacity. Then we can add the Domain. Maybe we don't have to worry about suiciding anything out. Domain. Creep it over the top of these two. Then we can add our Pantheism back, which is going to be nice. And then at the same time, we can also add... And then make sure he doesn't have an Honest in hand for this. Getting everything going now. I've never actually seen close-ups of the idea. I don't know why I haven't really paid attention to that ever. Add a Ryza. And then Thessalo, see his hand. Get rid of this one. Just making sure that we can't run into an Honest there, and we should have game. That'll pump him up. And then we are good to go. 
All right. So Monarch isn't actually having an issue with the deck like I thought it was going to. Um, we didn't even really get to see his deck though, so who knows what he's actually playing. Uh, I'm sure we're going to find out a whole lot more about that now when we jump into it using uh, their loner deck though. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll take a look at it again here using the loner deck. So it says if there are five more or more light monsters in the grave with different names, and there are possibly that light ray monsters we've tested summon. So it's the light for the light rays. We saw that. Okay, we did see the light rays, just the one, but we saw it at least. All right, we're going first here. Unfortunately, light sworn of spear. I have never actually seen this card. Interesting. Interesting. What does this one do? One starry night monster? I've never even heard of those. What the heck is going on? Uh, let's just go ahead and do this, I suppose. And we'll add a... Lumina. What did we dump into the grave already? One, two, so we have three different ones already. And a wolf, okay. There's that for us. We'll just normal summon a Raiden here. Activate his effect to dump. A Felix. Special summon that. And we can actually synchro summon into. I don't even know what these are. Da, 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 da. I feel like I just want to go into a Minerva here. Let's go Minerva. I believe this is a tuner, right? Yeah. So we'll go. Oh, these are both tuners. We'll go Wolf and Raiden here. Minerva. Big boy prize card itself. Activate its effect. We'll detach the wolf. And that sent three to the grave. And we didn't get to draw anything because they were all Starry Knights and a Judgment Dragon. Dope. Alright. Oh, so we're both playing Starry Knights? Or no, he's playing Light Rays. Okay, so we have a Lumina. We need a Lila. Is there a Lila in the grave? This is going to be adding one. I don't even know what the Starry Knights do, to be honest. What do you guys do? Adding star the spells or traps. I guess it has a spell or trap if I want it. What it's supposed to do in addition. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll normal summon the Lumina. We'll activate Lumina's effect. We're going to discard the Shire to special summon a Lila from Grave. There we go. There's that. Activate your effect to pop this. That's good for us. Um, we'll activate your effect real quick. Detaching this, and that should... We, we literally still didn't dump anything. Are you really, really sure about that? Okay, okay. We have a lot of things. Can he banish face down? He can. This one and this one. That's why we couldn't bring him up before, because he was real seven. Okay. Into Michael. Michael, we can activate that. Banish to this. Is this in the grave? Or is this the one in my hand? That is the one in the grave, okay. So what are you doing? You can banish this card from grave or target one level seven, you control or turn it to your hand. No, I don't wanna do that. Banish that, so this is gonna allow us to summon. So we can summon this, we can add a spell or trap. I've never even heard of these, these starry knights. Are they even a real thing? I have no idea. What do they do? That's just gonna add, that's the field spell. One fairy monster in your hand, if you do add a level seven. If I have a fairy in my hand. Are you a fairy? You're a warrior. Um, spells or traps during the main phase. Strike one, turn it to the hand, special one to level seven. That's dumb. Return one level, negate, okay, well, I guess we can do that one. That's at least a decent one for us. Can we go into anything fun here? A Minerva? Two level four monsters. 
Um, Paladin. That's pretty much it, though. Do I have to control a Starry Knight? I do not. Okay. Wanted to make sure I didn't have to control a Starry Knight for that effect to happen. We'll go right here. Am I going to get to draw any cards this time? Am I going to mill anything of value? That is the question. Probably not. And I can't even use it because I can only use it once per turn. Ah! Detach, or set that. Battle phase, attack for 66. What does he even do? So you can banish this card. Then target one, return. That seems so dumb. I don't want him to do that. Do I have any dragons in the graveyard that I could do that? Bring back? I guess I could bring that back. Oh well. End turn. Mill. How many cards do I have left? 17? I'll survive. Yeah, I'll survive. Easy mode. Drop for turn. I don't even know what this card does. During opponent's turn, we do stuff. We're not... I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, we can activate his effect now. Pay a thousand, banish that. Battle phase, attack for game. Alright, we're done with the starting nice. Easy, easy, easy. I shouldn't say too easy, but we got through it. That's what matters. Alright. This is actually they're going fat this is going faster than I thought it was gonna be. We might actually get through this in like two videos. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into our next one here. So we got the most vigilant is Se the mis the most vigilant is Cephalon. The ult oh, we're playing against Time Lords. That's not gonna be fun. I hate playing against Time Lords. He's playing. I'm gonna use Lynx. I guess I have Raiden, and I have this. Uh, no fun. Okay, we'll just activate his effect. Start dumping things, see if we can get some into the grave. We got a wolf though. I just saw a Chaos Dragon go away and I'm very sad about that. Um, we'll go into a Minerva here. Let me draw anything. We haven't been able to draw anything yet off of this. But we'll activate it anyway. We'll try it out and see what we can do. Do we get to draw anything? No, I just saw an Omni Dragon go by. Ugh. We just don't know how to mill light swarms apparently. Ooh. Uh, Do we get any mills there? We did get a mill actually for the first time in forever. That would have been nice later on. Time Lord. Oh, fudge. What's that one going to be doing? I guess we can special the Brotar. Brotar effect. Discard a Phantasm. Selecting him to add a warrior. Discard one of these to add. Add a Raiden. Okay, so click damage equal to your opponent's attack of one of your opponent attack of one monster your opponent controls at battle this turn. Okay. And then he gains attack. If he attacks. Okay, so this card we can trip it over the top of this, I suppose. Damn. That's nice. Um, during each event phase, send three to the grave. Cannot be so summoned. Control. Da, da, da. Can't be sure about card effects. Drop that card into the deck. So we won't do anything with that. We can't just attack right over this, and we'll just wait for this to go away by itself. Main phase two. We'll activate this, discarding the Raiden, drawing two, and then he can dump two. Punishment Dragon and a Regeki. Okay, so we should be good now. We should be good. You can pay a thousand, shuffle into the deck, all cards are graveyards and all face up. 
banish cards. That's gonna shuffle. Okay, yeah. And he can't be destroyed by battle, right? Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. So if I can get rid of him a different way, that'd be nice. I just don't know what that would be. No rank fours. If I could banish, that'd be dope, but there's no way to do that. Four more banished slice or monster different names? How do you even get banished ones? What the heck? That's not gonna do anything either. Game is by card effects. Kind of a crappy situation here. Um, I am just gonna go ahead and monster reborn something, I guess. Anything worthwhile. If this card is special summon, you can target one face up monster. I'm gonna try that, because I'm just gonna trip it away anyway, so that doesn't really matter to me. But we're gonna find out. Can he activate his effect? I can't target him, so I have to target him to add a dragon. Which is fine. Um, let's discard a Punisher Dragon, because I have no way of getting banished monsters really out of that. Ooh, mana, da da da. Or one of these. Must be such someone if they're. Same column. That's kind of dumb. We'll add that, I guess. And then we will attribute it off for. this. Well, let's end our turn there. What bringing these things out? What does he do? That wasn't nice. And he can't be destroyed by battle or card effects either. We need to figure out a way to get rid of whatever he's got going on. What do I have in my extra deck? I need to get to a uh, this guy, Michael. I need to get to Michael, to be honest. I need to get to Michael, but I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know, I don't know. And he's never gonna link. He's never gonna link. Felis, that could maybe help me into something. Shuffle that into the deck. Just set something, don't even. Ooh, okay. Okay. Could this help me here? Are you sinking? Are you linking? Ooh, okay. Into a hip, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and summon this just to uh, get it on the field since uh, probably the only time I'm ever gonna be able to do that. Select a card to return to the deck. That one. That's not what I wanted to see. Down to three but uh. Yeah, we're gonna summon this out. <laughs> we're gonna summon this out just to, yeah, get that out on the field for some protection. Adding a wolf, that's fine, that's useless anyway. Um, we'll activate his effect, targeting this dragon to add our own dragon. Select a card to add from your deck to your hand, I guess we'll add that as well. Did I, di did I discard my dragon by accident because I was stupid? I think I did. I think I did. Cards in deck is 22. Can I do 4300 damage in one turn? That is my question right now. I think I should be able to, depending on what happens here. We'll go ahead and we'll activate our Regeki. Getting rid of his. We can't actually do this anymore. That's not good for me. We will activate our Solar Recharge, discarding that to draw two and send two. Got a wolf. We can do that. Okay. We'll set this face down. 
we'll, nor we'll tribute summon this over the top of the wolf. How much attack is he going to have? Literally just enough. Literally just enough to get through this. How lucky is that? Holy crap. <laughs> we got just enough in the grave. Cool. The timeless heart of justice. All right. Well, earlier I was talking about how we weren't going to have problems with monarchs. We might be able, we might not be able to do this anymore just because of how crappy the time lords are. We're going to find out if we can get through this one. This is going to be our last duel of the day if we can get through it. If we can get through it. That's the big thing. Eidos, reinforcement, literally zero monsters. That's not what I wanted to see whatsoever. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll activate the reinforcement, adding the idea, and then ending our turn and hoping that we don't lose very, very fast. I need a monster. I need a, I need a big boy monster. I don't know where those are going to be, though. He gets a soul recharge. Okay. Ooh. He's going to... Okay. Adding the Jane. To the Lumina. Discard to special. I'm just going to attack in for 2850. 3850. Okay. And then mill everything. Urgent Duggins 19. Can I get a monster? I did get a monster. I'll take it. Okay, so from here... Hmm, let's just go ahead. We're going to normal summon our items. Activate the storm port. That will allow us to tribute summon one of his monsters. Now we can summon... Let's go over the top of this one. So let's see what he has in his deck that we... Um, either one of these, literally, we don't want him to have anymore. That helps. Battle phase into his Lumina, so he can't use that one. Main phase two, we'll toss us an Erupt here and hope that he can't do anything. The good thing is that with the Erupt there, his Time Lords actually can activate their effects. So that will help us a bit. But who knows, he might just deck out his entire deck here. Literally. Ten cards left in deck. He might just deck out, that'd be fine, a way to win. Keep going. Discarding a special summon, ooh, Judgment Dragon. Add the Judgment Dragon, he's just gonna special summon it. Why did he not spell? Oh, yes. Okay. He should have special summoned the Judgment Dragon, but he didn't. There it is. Why would he. He can't be sure of a card effects, I guess. The question is here. So I would take two from this 1850, two, three, three, 350. The Ultimate Time Lord screws everything up for me. At least 10 or more monsters. That's why he was doing everything. Holy crap. Activate those erupts so he can't do that, I guess. And then we're just going to lose to everything else. Yeah, because he can just do 2, and then 4, and then 18, 15, and 12. And we didn't open up good enough. Didn't open good enough. If I... I shouldn't say I wish I would have known that he was trying to get 10 monsters in the grave. But I wish I would have known that. <laughs> so for now on, the Solos and the grab the ultimate time lord. We should have read him. Got another Solos though, so at least we got something going. He's going first though. Okay, probably a Raiko. Let's go ahead. Hmm. Hmm. The main literally doesn't help us at all in this deck, to be honest. Like, the only way it helps us is to this. This card to draw two into a return and a tenacity. Let's activate the return. Activate the tenacity. Reveal the Erebus. Uh, we'll grab a Stormforth here. Um, normal summon, or I'd, I'd do. 
and the uh, Monarch Storm Forth. We'll tribute off his Raikou. I'm hoping it's Raikou anyway. Tribute and tribute. Is it a Raikou? Question is. Yes, it is. Haha! -ha. Into Erebus. Chainlink 1 return. We'll add an Aether for disruption. Chainlink 2 the Aether to dump and then shuffle 1 back. Uh, we'll dump a Pantheism and a Prime. Uh, shuffle 1, yes. Add the Aether. We'll activate a Pantheism. Hmm. The question is here, so we've already used a Tenacity. Do we want to get a, I think I do, a Stormforth or an Erupt? So we're going to stop their, their effects or we can use Aether. Okay, so we're going to set that. So next turn we can actually activate the, we can activate Aether, paint this. We can tribute their monster. Main two, we'll set our infinite. And we should be able to disrupt as much as we need to during the next turn and win right away. I'm guessing. Should be in my plan. Hmm. Is before the end of the main phase. So let's go ahead. We're going to chain Aether. We're going to banish a Tenacity. We're going to chain the Prime. Banishing the Domain. We're going to chain the Monarch Storm forth. So we should be good now. Resolves. Cool. Alright, so Prime's going to come out. And then Aether. Normal Summon. Tributing 2. Tributing his and tributing my. Chain one to add. Chain two a special. And let's go with a. He hasn't been setting anything, so let's go with a Ryza. Dump our last and dump the escalation. And we'll add a Ryza. Or special Ryza, and then we can add a. Ooh, let's just add a. Erebus, probably the best way there. Ooh, we can bring it right back. Okay, well. Not what I wanted. Who's he gonna attack into? Inflict damage. I'm okay with taking 2800 damage. I'm okay with taking 2800 damage. Bring that back. He can't be destroyed, but that's okay. Domain. Let's activate our Pantheism and Grave. We will reveal Tenacity, Tenacity, and Storm 4. Which one are you giving me? Tenacity. We'll activate Tenacity here. Um, reveal the Risa, because we're going to need to get rid of this somehow. We're going to add the March. All right. From there, we can activate the Domain. Banning the Prime. Prime can banish the Tenacity we just used. Bring it out. Activate March. Activate Domain. Ryza. Summon the Ryza. No. Let me do this correctly. He's now at level 6. I don't need to do that. Thank you. Ugh. That was rough. Return this back to the deck. Return this back to the deck. And that's game. Return that for chain blocking. 
We'll add a Aether. Okay. Sends that back. Battle phase. Attack for game. Quick GG. Yes, it is. Alrighty. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Time Lords are kind of rough when it comes to not being able to destroy them by battle or card effects. And that is it. We've actually completed out a whole lot more than I thought I was going to today. Let's go ahead. We're going to jump into our scenario and we're going to end it off there. Alrighty. Though the Light Sworn possess ultimate power, sometimes even for them, the evils that appear are too great. When the enemy is too fierce, have they no choice but to just give up on justice? That is not an option. Deep within the realm of light lies a tightly sealed treasure chest. When a mighty enemy appears, the treasure, treasure box's heavy lid opens. And what comes out? Neatly folded robes of black await a warrior of justice, possessing the power of darkness. Therein slumbers the Twilight Claw. When adorned by a light sworn, that warrior of justice imb is imbued with the powers of both light and darkness. When they wear the twilight cloth, show no mercy. Uh, they who wear the twilight cloth show no mercy to the forces of evil. Looks like a wish. Joining forces with the black punishment dragon, those warriors will not relent in their onslaught until all wickedness is vanquished from the from the world. Alrighty. So I'm guessing that's what it's going to be. Uh, what these are going to be is like learning about all of the twilight swarms. But we're going to go ahead and end it off right here for you guys right now. Um, in tomorrow's episode, we are going to be going through the rest of it and just figuring out everything that's happening with the Twilight Swarms. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to hit that like button for me because all your support is greatly appreciated. If you could not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We are still aiming for a 1.5 thousand subscription goal by the end of May-ish, June area. Hopefully we can do that and we can do a cool celebration for you guys then. That's all I've got for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Nathan from the Scrub Academy. Setting up for now. Peace out.